Hey, what's up guys? The Books here again. Welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2 and Star Wars Galaxy at War. We are back with some more Star Wars Arena, but it's not the classic Star Wars Arena that I personally created a while back. This is simply the Star Wars Arena I think most people think of when they think of an arena. It's the one on Geonosis, uh, and this one can be used for plenty of cool battles. There's plenty of room for even vehicles and uh, even more massive battles than we did in our previous arena game. So what we're going to do today is discuss some ideas that I have for this beautiful arena map created by um, Mighty Mapper 123, and it actually has a name. It's called the Petranaki Arena. Petranaki Arena, cool. That's, that's interesting. Almost sounds a little Russian, not so much Junotian, but uh, what do you know? Uh, we can add objects to it, like destroy the buildings, ruins, rocks, and stuff, and make it kind of like a cool um, deserty, destroyed ruins look, where we can have some pretty cool firefights. We can do like a Hunger Games scenario with with weapons spread out throughout the entire arena. It is that big. I mean, look at these zombies down here. Like the the arena we previously used would be about as big as the circle, if not that if that big at all. About that size, if I can remember it correctly. So this one is huge. So we're doing a little kind of ideas, suggestions, things today. So let me know in the comment section what you would like to see. We're going to do a zombie scenario. We're going to do a last stand scenario. And then we're going to do a, just a massive all-out, like, 500 clones and droids battle in this place. So it's just a little warm-up kind of thing. And people have been wanting to see more Star Wars. So this is what I can offer you up next. I also have a Mandalorian fort battle coming out. We've done a lot of like huge fort defenses for World War II. Now we're doing one for Star Wars, so be excited for that as well. I don't think I have anything else to announce really. Uh, if you guys want to see more classic arena battles with the with the sections and, and, and things and spawning points and center location, then we can do that as well. But without further ado, let's see how 20 clones can do against 100 zombies. Then we're going to move up to 220 zombies, then 370. And if the clones can last 370 zombies, then, well, that's a pretty good job. So let's find out how they do against, uh... 100. So they're splitting up. Half is going one way, the half the other. But right now they're... Ooh, and now they're splitting up into even more groups. That's really cool. Look at that formation. They're just, like, surrounding them. It's like... Super advanced clone tactics. Dude! That was intense. And then they're going to meet back at the center and talk about it. Well, guys, that was a really, really good job. I mean, that was fantastic. Look at that. They formed kind of like an eight. Cool. That is just Men of War AI being freaking fantastic. You don't see this shit in Ultimate Epic Battle Simula Simulator. I might make a parody video on that. Uh, long story short... Um, I have nothing against any YouTuber who do it or people who enjoy the game. If you actually enjoy it, then I guess that's just kind of like your cup of tea. But comparing it to Men of War is bizarre. And some people do that at times. And I'm like, Ugh. might make a little parody video on that later. But we'll, we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, let's move over to 220 zombies. And don't ask me why the numbers are so specific. It's just how many I could fit in a circle, I guess. 220, let's go. All right, guys, it's time to see how the 20 clones will do against 220 zombies. So more than twice the amount previously. Now, this time, they'll be on hold position because they're very aggressive, and zombies kill people at close range. So walking closer to the zombies is, is more lethal and is most likely going to get you killed, seeing as in last round, they were very, very close to 100 zombies. With there being more than twice that amount, they're going to get eaten. I can guarantee it. Um, but we can we can do another test round after all these three rounds to see how they fare if they're on free move and they can kind of run up close to the zombies. I mean, granted, it's more aggressive, but it's, it's zombies are, are not the ones you want to, you know, keep close to yourself. Um, and also, sorry for not uploading any videos yesterday. Uh, been kind of sick out for a bit of a bender on Thursday, so uh, I fared kind of ill on, uh, on, on Friday, so no videos on Friday, but uh, hopefully two videos today, this being the first one, and possibly two videos tomorrow as well. 
See, if they were walking closer to the zombies, by now they'd probably already all be dead. The funny thing is that they're actually targeting the zombies closest to them. And that is fantastic. The AI technically doesn't know that they're zombies, but that's how the targeting system works in general, is to eliminate the enemies that you're going to stand the greatest chance at hitting. And now that was 220 zombies. What is 370 going to do to this? That's not twice the amount, but close to. Ooh, just 50 less than twice the amount, right? No. Um, 70 less, I think. That would be 420. 220, yeah. Or 440. 370 is 70 less than that. So, uh, still uh, a pretty big step up. I like how the, the circles are formed like this. Looks pretty cool. Now we got like a kissing lips. Now we got the rolling stones kind of thing going on here, guys. You see that? The lips? <laughs> it's funny. Uh, let's go. What? Someone just died a little further away from everyone else. Otherwise, everyone else is pretty much information. Zero casualties. Let's move on to the final stage. 370 zombies. Here we are for the final wave. Wave three. 370 zombies versus 20 clones. Uh, I forgot to mention that they do have mixed weaponry. There are about two snipers here, two shotguns, uh, two pistols, a few of the short uh, length DC-15, also known as the carbine, um, DC-15C, and mainly DC-15As, which is the, the main assault rifle, or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> main blaster. Uh, and we also have a few of the, I believe, DC-19, uh, which I usually use a lot for the stormtroopers later on. It's got that kind of MG34 look. I believe you can see right there. Might be hard to tell. But anyway, um, that is indeed Wave 3. And as you can tell, a lot more. Obviously a little more spaced out. Otherwise, it would be close to impossible to, to making this doable win for the clones. But we'll have to find out how, how they can do. This is three pretty nasty circles. Uh... I'm excited to see. Let's uh, let's find out how the clones will do against the final wave. This is going to be quite the challenge. Try and get a few cool screenshots while we're at it. Look at that circle holding it down. So they haven't even dealt with wave yet one yet. They're just about done with wave one. And there we go. Now they're going to start shooting down wave two. Oh, Lord. Wave 2 not done yet. They're getting close to it. Damn, these clones are deadly. And just got done with Wave 2. Wave 3 is getting so close. Hold. Oh, dude. These guys are some shooters. I wonder if any zombies are going to get close. Any at all? Holy shit. Damn. Wow. Wow. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that at all. Like, the closer the zombies got, the more deadly the clones got, it felt like. You know what I'm saying when I say MG34 kind of looking thing? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, this is the, uh, the DC-19. Correctamondo. Correctamando, or whatever the hell they say. Cool looking gun. I like it when they take World War II weapons and kind of make them a little... Spacey, in a way. Nice. Look at this thing. But I do believe the the, uh, the Empire Stormtroopers use this one as well. They do. And they use the DC-21, which looks like a Lewis gun without the magazine up top. Pretty cool stuff, too. You know, Very cool stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let's move over to a little kind of uh, intermission, or whatever you want to call it, like a little B-roll thing. Uh, we're doing a epic last stand. I believe I've seen like screenshots of this when I Google this arena. It's like a bunch of Jedis and, and clones, like fighting off of surrounded by droids. I've I've just I used that picture for a thumbnail once. I wonder if that came from one of the movies or something. But uh, without a doubt, that's something I'd I'd love to do. So uh, let's move over to the next one, and then we'll wrap this arena video up with a massive clone and droid battle. See you guys in a second. All right, guys, welcome back to part two of the video. Uh, it might not look like it, but there are actually 100 Jedis and clones here in the center. We have troops from the uh, 7th Sky Corps, 501st. We've even got some Doom soldiers here, Doom Legion, I believe they were called. We've got some of uh, the 65th, um, some uh, Nova Corps, you name it. 212th Attack Battalion. 
91st Reconnaissance Corps. Uh, we do even have some... Uh, we, have, we have a minigun right here in the center. Very cool stuff. Bazooka, too. Plenty of Jedis. Uh, this is going to be cool. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pop up a, a picture uh, on the screen right now of what I was thinking of when I created this. And that could kind of be what inspired me because it's just it's just a cool scenario kind of surrounded like this by by mixed droids we got about two droid cars we got two super battle droids and just a whole lot of droids spread out i have no idea how this is going to go this could be a slaughter something tells me the droids are going to whip their asses whoop them up not whip them whip them you you whip it you whip and flip in the kitchen you whoop on the street on the streets of geonosis anyway that aside let's click start and let's see what they can do oh shit The Jedi's are charging out at him. Look at the Jedi's! They're going for it. Look at them! Jedi! Oh, they're like shot down close. Holy shit! Well, over here we had a little bit of success. Oh, that super battle door. Yeah, that was a slaughter. That was an absolute slaughter. Let's take a look at casualties. We'll do droid casualties in red. And you can tell a few of them have been cut down by perhaps lightsabers or blasters, but like this guy over here but in general they were just killed and these jedis might not have been the most supreme um obviously you can't it's hard to to deflect shots at a 360 degree angle now that was a very quick second part what an absolute slaughter sorry to disappoint you guys but the 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 these uh uh cis droids confederate of Indi i say it says cis because you can say cis but people think about it the other way, what's what does that mean now again? Uh, it's a, more of a modern uh, abbreviation for something else. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, um, yeah, Confederate of Independent System droids. Just Confederate droids, I guess, or just Separatist droids. Um, not to be messed with, not to be taken too lightly. We'll actually see how these droids will do in a more even and fair battle against an equal amount of clones. I'm excited. This is going to be the final showdown of this map. This map. Then I'll be sure to read all your comments about what you guys would like to see on it. It is very nice. It is very beautiful. And I'm sure we can create some pretty cool shit here in the center. Like unarmed. People running for guns and stuff. And ooh, shooting each other and see who's the last man alive. That would be cool. That would be cool. Anyway, see you guys soon again. Ciao. Here we are for the final part of this video. The massive 270 clones versus 270 droids. So over 500 participants here in this uh, fairly... A large arena, but not not a incomprehensible. Incomprehensibly, that's funny. Now that's funny. Incom I was being incomprehensible, trying to say incomprehensibly large arena. Anyway, we'll leave that in because I'm a schmuck. Schmuck a duke. Do do do. Part three. Let's uh, let's start this off, and let's see what happens. Hmm. Looks like they're the combatants are. Walking up to each other to do a little greeting, say say hi, maybe share some of the the rumors that's been going on. Like the droids have no DX. Oh, they're shooting at each other. That is a start to the battle, and this is gonna be cool because the people further back are probably gonna be. Why are they shooting only at like, dude, droids? You're focusing fire on a dead commander. What an X. The droids are that stupid. Separatists, like, you gotta reprogram your AI. You gotta get Notch or someone to, like, freaking Minecraft it up in their head, you know. Create some create some boom in AI. So, the droids aren't pulling back, though. They're actually moving forward. Very cool. We have some clone quitters over here. Come on, guys. Cover? What the hell is cover? Just lay down. Enjoy the sand. It's hot and nice. Once again, Separatist firepower... Has, I've always known Separatist firepower to be pretty absurd. And, well, they're they're taking a lot of beating, but they're actually moving up. Remember, exactly even numbers here. 100% even numbers, even spacing, everything even. The guns aren't even, but, hey, K-98 and M1 Garand. Those are two different conflicts, too. I believe what makes a conflict and what makes a war is the weaponry, too. Because without things to kill each other... It's not really a war. Then it's more of an argument, <laughs> you know? I mean... I, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, like, if you got two... Na that's like a football... It's, it's a soccer game, essentially, without the weapons. They, they hate each other just as much, and they're going to, like, fist fight each other, but it, I don't think that many people are going to die, necessarily. 
but you add guns to it. Imagine, like, the most heated soccer game ever, and everyone had AK-47s. That would just turn into a fucking shitstorm. So we have a center. A center that's actually holding. They're not pulling back anymore. And then we got two flanks that, that are about as strong as a flank stake. And they're just holding it back. Hold it down. Hold it down. The droids are forming kind of a half moon, too. Except their flanks are actually bending forward a bit. And it's it's laggy. Granted, UEBS don't lag you that much, but it don't look as pretty. And units don't move around on their own will and shit. It's like they have one end desire. And the funny thing about that game is, think about it. No, think about it for real. When you hit the game, knows before you click that start button, the game knows who's gonna win or not because everything is pre-made. You set down. There's like no AI. It's all pre-programmed. You said that's why it doesn't. That's why it can t handle the amount of battles it does because there's no programming. There's no coding. There's no like. There's no real-time decision making to it. There's no dynamic. There's no dynamic experience to it. You put down a thousand soldiers versus another thousand, and as soon as you click that start game start button, the game has already calculated the HP and damage of all those units and will tell you that boom, that side will win. And every time you hit start, all those units will do the exact same. Thing. They'll move in the exact same pattern pretty, pretty much, unless you as a player do anything else to affect that. Here, look, every time you're going to hit that start button in this game, it's going to be different. And the, the firefight ended, and now they're running for you. They're, they're charging. Bayonet, charge! Charge! This is just turning into more of a pretty epic standout. Or standoff, not a standout. Standout? I don't know what that is. Holy shit, it's pretty, though. There's, like, purple and pink and, like, they're mixing each other. Red and blue turning purple. Turning codeine purple. Future, so, like, Future showed up to the arena because of all the purple. He's like, man, so much purple here. <laughs> I don't know, bro. All I know is two minutes away from now, I got my hamburger coming in from Phil's Burger. What up, Fedora? Can you sponsor me, Fedora? Can, I think Fedora should sponsor me so that I can uh, get food. While I'm working. Philip is going to hit me up with the burgers. Still a little bit laggy, though. I mean, I mean, I think it might be the particles. I think Star Wars, this is the particles. If these were like K98s and shit, it would be a whole different thing. It's them particles. Them particles that make it look so pretty. Why are these people pulling back so much? So, not a lot of people are dying. I mean, the droids have de definitely taken more casualties. But why are the clones stand holding back so much? Like, the, the clones have not taken as many. Oh, then again, maybe bodies have been disappearing. They can fire from here. Clankus. Wankus. Clankus and wankus. If you hear a doorbell, that's, that's my food. Bruh. And I tell, I tell the delivery guy every time to avoid social contact that I'm sick. Just leave it outside the door. Actually, it's to avoid tipping. But it's actually not to avoid tipping. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. In Sweden, we rarely tip as much as people do in America. When I went to the States, fine. It's pretty customary to tip at restaurants. Not McDonald's and stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't think you guys tip there either. But... Yeah, you go to a lunch place or, or a dinner place, you tip, you know, you order a drink out, you tip, maybe not a, just a beer because a beer doesn't really take any effort. And sure, if a cab driver is nice and helping you with the luggage and doors and stuff, you tip too in the hotel and blah, blah, blah. Like, we have, we share that pretty much. But a barber? You tip a barber? What the fuck? Like, sorry, but that's, that's incomprehensible to me here in Sweden. We don't tip barbers and shit. Uh, and also... Delivery people like Fedora. I know no none of my friends tip delivery mostly because they're like students and shit, but um, I get this like I feel bad not doing it because he, he has to walk up the stairs to my apartment building So it seems it's very unswedish to tip for something like that because they get paid so much They get like $20 an hour. They get fucking $20 an hour as a delivery dude like in fucking shit, bro And like the provis pr provisions and shit, but anyway um, I do that and, and so when I don't have any cash on me, because we're very, like, we don't have a lot of cash in this society, in Sweden. Like, we use mainly cards. A lot of people, a lot of places don't even accept cash. We're very much, like, digitalized like that. Um, then 
I don't have any on me and then I feel bad. And so then I just say leave it outside the door. So it's not really to avoid tipping. It's more to avoid the like, thank you for running up. But he's fine doing it because he gets paid so much anyway for doing it. So like, I don't know. He's here in two minutes and he's probably, what if he's like listening to my car? What if he's gonna, oh. Oh, I thought I crashed, bro, bro. Don't scare me like that again, bro. Do not, I'm gonna pause. And I'm gonna end this recording here. And then I'm gonna restart it in case we lose it. This is almost more fun than sad, but I did actually crash. Luckily, I got my burgers though, and I don't want them to get cold. So, um, I guess everything turned out for the better. This battle was pretty much never ending. The clones kept staying back, despite the fact that they outnumbered the droids. And the droids were like, straight up thugging. Like, I saw two droids run up on their own back there to attack, like, 50 clones. That's crazy, man. They're crazy. The droids got them, the, the balls, and maybe the clones have the other thing, but not sure. Um, whatever the rumor is in Geonosis or Star Wars. Uh, I'm gonna not be so off topic. I uh, guess I'll end it this way. Thank you guys for uh, watching and look forward to more Star Wars Galaxy at War later. Um, yeah, we, we crashed. Um, Yeah, something happened, please. Uh, good thing I saved the best part of the battle, though, which was the start in the center. So, see you guys soon again. Ciao.